from the early 1960s. Here's a Benjamin Miracord ELAC Miracord 10 record changer. Nice wood. I've found a dust cover that fits this if I take the spindle off. An old realistic. But other than that, I do not have an original dust cover. The spindle, I think they call it a magic spindle, has these little sort of umbrella things that, when it's like this, balance the record itself. You don't need uh, overarm balance. But on the other hand, whenever you take a record off, you have to take this whole thing out. We have four speeds, as you might expect from the day. Over here we have the tone arm, and this, when it's in this position, is locked. I make that mistake all the time. I don't for remember to unlock it and the record doesn't play. Um, we have a Pickering cartridge in it right now, not the original Miracord cartridge. Um, push buttons for 7 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and another push button for stop. So when you want to play a 7 inch record, you've got them on there, you just press that and it starts. And you can let it stop automatically or stop it yourself. Over here, we have an adjustment for the uh, drop-down position of the stylus, which I had to use extensively when I got it because they would not drop in the right position. Sort of back here is the tone arm height adjustment. We have a little counterbalance here that you just tighten like that. Now, when I got this, this whole thing just fell off. I didn't know where it was, so I looked at the marks where it had sat for decades and just set it there. Originally this would have come with a little weight that was marked like two, four, six grams and things and you would have put that in there and then set it where you wanted it and then tightened that down. But that weight has been lost in history. Um, we have nice wood everywhere and a power cord that comes out from the back and a pair of phono plugs that come out from the back. Taking a look under the unit here, it's awful awkward to try and turn this thing over. You see we have one main capacitor there, quite a few things that are going to need to be greased to quiet some of that noise, particularly on stopping. Um, other than that, we have one label, kind of upside down from our angle. No. Okay, for any of our sound demonstrations today, we're going to be using the phono plugs from uh, underneath the mirror cord into the Aquatron little um, tuner there. It's not the greatest audio or the loudest, but it's very convenient for what we'll be doing today. Notice the turntable mat here, rubber and it has an identifiable spot for 7 inch, 10 inch, and uh, 12 inch drop records. Okay, for our first sound test, I guess we'll start with the 78. I don't have any 16 RPM records, unfortunately. Let's see. Speed to 78. Press a 10 inch record. Better turn on some volume here.
and here's the odd part. Let's say I tried to take this record, slide it up off the spindle. Nope, it's not going to happen. The whole spindle has to come out. Quite inconvenient, but that's the way it was designed, I guess. All right, let's try a couple of 33s. Neither one of these are in great condition. record. So to me it's the mechanism that is interesting about this record changer. If I hooked it up to a better amplifier of course I could get much better audio. it here and keep the copyright police away. Let me knock the volume down here. And we'll kind of get under here and push it to the end. And you can see what happens when it gets to its run out, which takes a minute. And it should drop the next record. There we go. Who's this, Johnny Mathis? stop it manually. Now I could not have, when I, this second record dropped, I could not have put a third record on here and expected it to drop after the second one was done. You have to have all, as near as I can tell by experimenting, I have to have all of the records I want to play on when it drops its first one it won't adjust anymore after that. I'm not sure why. All right, I have a couple of 45s on right now. And this mirror cord had an optional big uh, large hole adapter for 45s and other things that needed large holes. And uh, I did not have that. And YouTuber Chris Cuff has a video about those adapters for the mirror cords on his channel. You might want to check that out. So I've just put the little inserts in and we'll show what it does here. Um, 45, seven inch. Get a little volume here anyway. Okay, I want to show you a couple other odd things about 45s that I have determined. If I didn't want to use the large 
magic spindle, I think they call it, because it's kind of a nuisance. I have a one of these and one of these. Now, the, the single play spindle, but it's not the original mirror cord. So let's say I put that in there and I put the record on and I'll play it. Come on, where are you at? And I try and play it. Watch what happens. Ah, the record doesn't spin. Go figure. I don't know why, maybe the Miracord single play adapter would be better. Whoa, that doesn't sound good, does it? So, obviously that little uh, spindle by itself is not what we want. So I tried this little adapter there with a large hole 45 and this kind of works. Not necessarily great, but somewhat. And the interesting thing, when you get to the end of a record like this, I've noticed it restarts, replays itself, once it finally uh, gets to the runout groove, which I've noticed takes quite a while on all speeds of these records. And it starts again. That's kind of convenient. Until we stop it. Here's the little old Radio Shack dust cover. It fits, but of course you can't put it on there when you've got the spindle in there. It's the only place I have to put the spindle right now is kind of in the same groove and I think that's kind of dangerous so I don't know what I'll end up doing with this setup I think of something but I don't like it the way it is dust covers fine but the spindle needs more protection This has been a little couple examples of records dropping on the old Miracord 10 record changer from sometime 1960 to 1965. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.